hello everyone today we are going to discuss a brand new uh, and very interesting paper called injecting cell text in self supervised speech pre training and this paper is coming from google research and uh, the overview is as follows first we'll see the introduction of the paper then we'll see the proposed approach then we'll see the data set finally we'll see some experiments and results the nice a nice thing about this paper is uh, they show how uh, you can inject text information into the um, self supervised models or it's a pre trained models which are very uh, famous these days like for example wave to wave and so on and uh, the paper is quite interesting uh, and we'll understand how the text information is fed as input to this wave to wave model and how the performance uh, improves after you do this and so on as i said uh, this paper talks about adding textual modality to uh, uh, to a speech pretraining model so um, if you think about uh, recent developments in uh, self supervised pretraining for uh, speech um, uh, wave to wake is one of the <coughs> very famous model these days uh, and if you see wave to wake what it does it it is a it's a, it's a architecture a neural architecture which takes some input let's call it as x it could be raw audio or mfcc frames and so on anything and it generates some um, representation let's call it as c and um, using these representations uh, you can fine tune um, or uh, these representations are so robust that using a very small amount of label data you can fine tune this model uh, to any downstream speech application for example for example uh, uh, speech to text or stt you can also fine tune it for emotion recognition or language identification and so on right and even people have tried it for speaker identifications as well and using a small amount of label data you can fine tune this model and get really good performance and uh, and that's the idea of this self supervised models and they are very famous these days lot of people are even in fact using it uh, using it in uh, productions or um, like in real uh, real speech apis right so uh, this is all fine uh, now the question you can ask is okay uh, can we add a different modality to it or can we add some kind of a text data and uh, the model can learn uh, or uh, model can uh, uh, model can get better representations using this textual modality this is like another guiding signal you are adding to this model so that you are getting uh, better performance not only better performance the model even uh, will be able to understand or get extra information such as lexical information and phonetic information and so on right so uh, this kind of supervision you can add from the text data and uh, you can get uh, you can you can improve the uh, overall system's performance so that is what is uh, proposed in this paper so and the paper they call it in the paper they call this model as uh, tts for pretrain we'll see why uh, because they use the text to speech model and so on and uh, like i said they can add or they can use this text data uh, and uh, they, or they can leverage this text data to feed extra information or extra guiding signals such as linguistic or lexical representations uh, so that the model uh, model performance uh, can be improved for downstream tasks such as speech recognition right and uh, the uh, as you know self supervised models are trained on untra untranscribed audios uh, and uh, in this case since we are adding text data it's unspoken text data so you are simply taking some random text data uh, from for example web you just crawl the text data and you have uh, a lot of audio uh, uh, for a particular language for example and you can how do you use these two in order to get a, a robust and uh, uh, a model a robust pretrained model which can which is which is which can be used for downstream applications and uh, as i said uh, they use uh, uh, Two different losses. One is contrastive loss, which is the standard uh, self supervised uh, learning class. They also add uh, a couple of additional losses, um, uh, or uh, additional losses. Uh, uh, we'll see uh, what those losses are uh, in order to improve the system performance. Uh, we'll see that in, in the coming slides. And um, uh, 
uh, this model again uh, obtains state of the art performance on libre speech and they also get really good performance uh, with both in house uh, data set and uh, uh, ami uh, corpus this is the proposed approach uh, the uh, proposed approach is called uh, tts for pretrain uh, first we'll see the model architecture uh, then we'll see uh, on the fly speech synthesis and returns we'll understand why this and so on like because you are hearing this term speech synthesis but we are basically working working with speech recognition here uh, but we, we will see why that is uh, why that is there and we'll see the loss which is simple contrastive loss not exactly similar to wave to wick completely little bit different but we'll see why, how that is done and then uh, we'll see how do you train this model with unspoken text and untranscribed audio data. Okay, here is the model architecture. As you can see, uh, there is an encoder. You can think of this encoder as a, some kind of a transformer or a conformer uh, with 20 or 30 layers of multi head self retention layers, right? And the model takes a L spectrogram as input. Uh, unlike in wave to wave they use the, uh, or wave to 2.0, they use the raw audio as input. In this case, they are using uh, mill spectrogram as input. The simple, the simple uh, change will be instead of using 1D convolution layers in the feature encoder, you can simply use a 2D convolution layer in the feature encoder. That's all, as simple as that. So then, you, then the main, main or heavy lifting is done by the context network, not by the feature encoder. Feature encoder is good because it extracts uh, features or high level, little, uh, high level features from the input. And uh, in case of Wave 2.0, they did not have, did not have any feature because they, they were using raw audio as input to the model. So they had to have some uh, feature encoder uh, which would extract some high-level information such as MFCC or spectral features uh, from the raw audio. But in this case, they are directly using mill spectrum, so they don't need actually a large feature encoder. So they can simply use uh, two or three layers of CNN to encode these uh, features from frequency to some high-level representation. That can directly go into the context network and the context network does all the heavy lifting because it has to learn the contextual representation such as uh, how phonemes are related or because because that's what is the main uh, main goal we are not uh, looking for slow features here uh, we are uh, focusing on fast features such as sorry we are not uh, looking at the fast features which are the the low level features we are looking at the high level features such as phonemes syllables and uh, words pieces and so on right so this is the encoder part and you feed the input and you get the output and then you can use the contrast you loss uh, and train the model. That is one part which is what is done in most of the self-supervised uh, models, right? And uh, this is the last function as you can see here, J speech is basically is going to take the speech uh, from a set of audio, audio data, like we have, let's say hundreds of hours of audio data, you select a sample or select audio say audio audio wave file and then feed it to the model and uh, theta e is the encoder's parameter which is basically the context network the transformer and then you can get the last function for that right as simple as that now the second part is how do you induce or how do you uh, uh, feed the text information to the encoder right so you can't directly feed the text information because the text is obviously is of a different uh, modality and the input is like a, input, input could be a simple bird feature or word word uh, word embeddings and so on if you use the text directly uh, we can't use it because the the model won't be able to learn or won't i mean you can't directly feed those features as input to this encoder because it is learning audio representations uh, now in order to add uh, text representations you have to uh, use this trick right what is a trick is you have let's say a bunch of uh, text data, I mean uh, hundreds of uh, let's say GBs of text data, you select a text, uh, text uh, utterance or sentence, right, You then you compute phoneme sequence of that, very simple, you can use any graph into phoneme converter, then you feed it to a text to speech engine, right, and the text to speech engine as you know, uh, what it does is, it takes the input which is in the form of text it could be a sequence of characters or it could be a sequence of phonemes and then generates a mill spectrogram right so uh, you can ask okay text to speech engine don't do that right so text to speech engine generates audio 
but that's where you are wrong uh, usually text to speech engines first generate um, most of them at least most of them first generate spectrograms and from spectrogram you can use uh, something called vocoders and vocoders are like um, uh, you can think of them as another neural network i mean before neural network we were using different ones such as world synthesizer or uh, griffin limb um, synthesizers and so on right so those are the vocoders and those vocoders will take this spectrogram and then generate audio from it right these days uh, i mean people have become fancy they, they use neural network so there is something called wave to wave sorry wave uh, net which takes spectrogram and generates raw audio signal uh, directly uh, um, which is i think the deep mind paper so those those you can use to generate audio but in our case we are not interested in audio we just want to take this male spectrogram and feed it to the encoder so since the spectrogram from uh, <coughs> A male spectrogram from audio and male spectrogram from the TTS engine they are same you can simply put them in a simple batch, similar uh, put them in a single batch and then feed it to the encoder right now the question is you can ask right okay you can do that but usually the text to speech engines are trained on single person's voice right a single speaker and the word audio I mean the speech will be kind of monotonic I mean robotic how is it going to help you in getting such a uh, boost up uh, or a good performance in in speech recognition task that's a very good question right what they do is they use multi speaker tts in this case not a single speaker tts and we will see like what is that multi speaker tts anyway and they also condition this tts on two uh, main uh, uh, characteristics of speech which is one is speaker and second one is prosody right so those are high level feature uh, or high level um, um, or, or, or uh, some kind of inputs you can feed it to a text to speech and tell the text to speech that okay i want to generate audio in this person's voice and i also want to generate in this prosody right so those are the input you can give to the model uh, what i'm saying is sounds so easy but it is done in a completely different way uh, so there is a paper called hierarchical wave to wave, uh, hierarchical variation autoencoders for text uh, speech synthesis uh, which is uh, again i think it's a go paper from google so what they do is very simple uh, imagine this text to speech engine is some kind of encoder decoder right so you have an encoder and you have a decoder decoder right and the encoder takes your uh, sequence of characteristics or it is sequence of characters let's say hello world right and you feed the uh, audio or feed the character sequence as input and the encoder will process it and then uh, decoder will do some sort of attention on it and then generates this uh, spectrogram matrix right male spectrogram matrix right that is very simple a simple tds engine but uh, in this case uh, in hierarchical uh, variation auto encoder what they do is they use two different um, variational um, auto encoders uh, or no, not two variational auto encoders so they use the encoders two different encoder which takes audio signal and then generates uh, these high level um, representations which are uh, which are uh, basically the latent vectors uh, from the variational auto encoder so if you want to understand like what is variational auto encoder and so on uh, you can uh, refer to this paper which is hierarchical variational auto encoder for speech synthesis or you can also read a variational auto encoder because we, uh, i think that's very important uh, to, in order to understand that paper probably i will cover that paper uh, or make a tutorial of that paper uh, um, probably like uh, next week um, so the idea is very simple so in case of variational auto encoder what you have is it's similar to auto encoder uh, but uh, it's kind of a probabilistic version of an auto encoder so like, imagine you have encoder and a decoder uh, theta and phi so phi are these variational parameters and you can feed a spectrogram to this and the encoder will predict uh, mean and standard deviation of a gaussian distribution then you can sample from that gaussian distribution and feed it as an input to the uh, input to the decoder and the decoder will predict the uh, the original input right unlike the uh, the normal auto encoder where you feed the input and get the output here there is some other uh, tricks going on and once you have the re output you can compute the reconstruction loss and you can compute the um, KL divergence and get the elbow loss which is the evidence lower bone and use that to uh, train the um, variational auto encoder and the training is not as simple as uh, back propagation they use something called reparameterization trick in order to compute the back uh, gradients of both uh, theta and phi 
and uh, so that's how the training is done so once you have this then you can take this encoder trained for um, let's say speakers you can put it here and you have so this is that's the global information right and you have local information so these two are the main main uh, uh, um, representations or main uh, uh, latent vectors you need in order to generate different speakers voice right or and different prosody say so, right so so uh, that's how it is done so once you have that then you can feed it to the encoder and then uh, then you can compute uh, obviously you can compute the crossover plus but also you can create an augmented uh, or uh, augmented loss functions which are um, uh, phoneme loss and word piece loss a uh, word piece decoder is basically um, uh, you you can compute word piece uh, word pieces because you have the transcript here so whatever uh, encoder output you get you can uh, force the encoder output to be a uh, distribution of uh, sequence of uh, word piece uh, or uh, phonemes or word pieces and so on and once you have that you can compute the loss over there and you can um, which is basically in the form of ctc uh, as you can see here so uh, the text loss uh, is basically uh, again uh, when you feed the text as input basically text means you are using tts and then feeding the input these are the two uh, losses right for updating the parameter theta right and also you have another decoder here which is basically the word piece decoder and phoneme decoder and these two decoders are trained using uh, joints uh, the ctc loss and the loss is actually back propagated into this encoder so that way this model learns to understand the um, the the structure of phonemes and the structure of uh, words right so because which context so even though we are telling the model to learn context directly from audio here i think providing text is will give you uh, will give the model better understanding of the um, better understanding of the context so basically the which phonemes should coexist like triphones and uh, syllables and so on right so uh, that is the auxiliary loss we are uh, learning here so um, so once you have these two losses you can just combine all the losses together and train the model right so as simple as that so uh, that is the model architecture part i think we took long time understanding that slide but uh, anyway uh, now computing on the uh, so the second uh, coming to the second part which is on the fly in speech synthesis and utterance selection so this is where i said uh, the text to speech engine could not uh, sh uh, should not be a plain tts engine which generates audio from a from a single speaker's voice and in a robotic or a same uh, same uh, prosody so you need to have speaker embedding and um, uh, other latent vectors as conditioning i mean other latent vector which conditions the tts engine so that you can get generate different speakers voices and different prosody right and second thing is um, uh, selecting the data right so selecting the text data for uh, training so uh, basically what they did is uh, what they have done is um, they have huge pool of uh, text text data right so uh, but they want they want to see that so the text data which is in the in domain um, for example let's say you have uh, data from uh, online right so you crawl all the web data but you are you are for speech recognition you are interested only in um, let's say um, uh, let's say in uh, um, voice search for example in this case right in the in case of google they are only interested in voice search and specific voice search for example assume you are uh, c considering voice search in a particular field let's say politics right so they want they have to find out okay we need to we need to have text data which is only in the polit only uh, uh, in the domain of politics right so what they do is they train a background model b which is again a language model and uh, you can train in domain model d and from these two uh, once you have these two model background model and in domain model you can take all your data which you have and feed it to these two model and compute the log probability of the of the word sequences or the sentences conditioned on those two models right so probability of this particular sentence given the in domain model and probability of that uh, uh, this particular sentence given this um, given this background model right so this is basically uh, computing the probability of the sentence right this language modeling uh, output right and once you have that then you can uh, uh, di divided by uh, number of words in that sentence uh, to just normalize the score and based on the score you can uh, based on these scores you can rank all the utterances and select only the top uh, let's say 100,000 of them right something like that so that's what is the selection of utterances and on the fly speech synthesis coming to the contextual loss uh, in the case of wave to wake as you know you use all this uh, quantization then you use Gumbel's uh, Gumbel trick in order to 
um, train the model end to end uh, because you have uh, you have to select the code books and so on right so in this case they don't do any of that thing so they just take the output from the context network right and they know the masked frame and this is this qt is basically not the quantization or quantized version of uh, the input at the time step t is just masked uh, time step t so basically it's the frame right so this is compute the similarity between the masked frame uh, which is the input to the context network and the output of the context network and they compute the similarity and uh, they they want to uh, make uh, the, the the loss tells you that uh, you want to find out you want to minimize this uh, or you want to make these two closer and uh, push all the other uh, vectors uh, far right so this is the contrast to loss as you know right so once you have this loss you can directly use this to train the model right as simple as that the only point the point i'm making is they don't use the quantization uh, network uh, anywhere they just uh, use the simple contrast to loss uh, coming to the uh, uh, the fourth section where uh, how do you combine the text loss and the uh, the audio loss or speech loss it's very simple you mix the synthetic data and real utterances within a batch which is uh, the thing what you let's say you have your batch size is 10 you take the five if you take five real audios and take five text files and then you get the ml spectrogram from both of them right then you mix them and once you mix them you compute the loss and you can get the final loss as the the linear uh, or the scaled version or some of these two losses with some scaling right now uh, coming to the data uh, they have uh, they have uh, done experiments for uh, both libri speech uh, ami and in house english data and in in house indian uh, language which is marathi and this is the statistics of the data and the uh, statistics of the yeah, data set for speech recognition and coming to TTS uh, because they want to also want to train this TTS so for English they use this Libri TTS and uh, which has lots of lots and lots of speakers and then you have for Marathi you have uh, 30 hours of data set comp comprising of seven Marathi speakers and for language model you just crawl all the not crawl you mean Google already has uh, search data for YouTube Google search and maps and so on and uh, they just use that data for training the language model and for libre speech they use the libre speech language model right? or libre speech data to train the language model and uh, coming to the model uh, uh, so the input is ct dimension log mill filter bank energy is uh, coefficients for the uh, as the input and um, the in the auxiliary losses they have this uh, 1024 world piece models for the target and um, for voice search that is for the libris uh, libris piece of course and for voice search since the data is used they are using 4000 volt pieces and this is the architectures and so on so we have excel xsl in-house data and the number of parameters number of layers and so on whether they use relative attention yes or no right and uh, coming to the uh, the tts engine uh, they use multi-speaker tts model uh, which is kind of a tachotron model tachotron 2 model uh, like I said, they condition the TTS model with both speaker and prosody, and uh, that's where they use this hierarchical variation autoencoder uh, for training, right? Or that's what that's the model. So, and uh, this is some architecture details. You can you can uh, read that later. And uh, um, language model again, uh, they use eight layer transformer, a language model for libre speech, and for in house they use. Uh, uh, um, in house us for voice search experiment they use conformer language model and uh, for marathi they use ngram language model because the data is small and so on right okay uh, now coming to the results section um, as you can see they have compared with um, conformer model which is uh, which is a simple uh, label uh, which uses it's a simple supervised uh, model supervised uh, speech recognition model right and um, if you do if you, if you compare it with previous model one is the wave to 2.0 then you have ubert ubert large ubert x large then you have wave to vec conformer which is again from google this is also from google and uh, if you use this paper's approach which is combining audio and text for pretending uh, then you have uh, these two models one is large and one is excel and another is xxl and um, if you look at the results as you can see when you don't use lm this model 
gets best results for almost all the test data test data with the lm uh, it's again uh, out of four it is kind of winning in three uh, test sets uh, but uh, the uh, uh, the conclusion is uh, this uh, combining audio data and text data uh, to pre-train or to uh, for self-supervised pre-training is always a good idea that's the claim uh, of this paper and I, I even I think so I think this is a really good idea I mean uh, I haven't seen a paper which does this kind of things like combining both text and audio to a single model I think this is the first paper I have seen other kind of papers where they um, like for example if you look at the unsupervised speech recognition paper by Facebook where they use unsupervised the unlabeled text data and unlabeled uh, audio data and uh, they use some kind of a GAN approach to do the speech recognition directly without any supervised data at all like zero supervised data but this is like kind of a like different idea and uh, yeah so that is the results for uh, liberty speech and coming to their in-house data uh, um, they have uh, no pre-training if they do maybe they just use the label data i think they get a pretty good uh, number if they do pre-training on liberty light and then uh, uh, they get this number and if they if they propose if they use this tts for pre-training means if they use text and speech they get uh, quite a large improvement and um, using youtube speech uh, kind of makes sense because uh, 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 i think the domain will be similar so 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 youtube using youtube speech is the best uh, way to or, or using youtube speech to pre-train the model uh, uh, is the best way to best uh, way to get good performance on voice search data right and also they show that using i um, mean rare world performance also gets better if you do this uh, tts for pro train quite a large improvement like uh, approximately three percent improvement uh, absolute improvements in wr and these are the results and uh, in fact the paper has uh, multiple other results for uh, like marathi and if they have few more tables and they have done a lot of experiments and uh, i definitely suggest you to check that out check it check out the paper yeah uh, it's a, it's a quite uh, it's a, it's, it has a very good details and also they have uh, they have explained the results very well right and uh, that's all for this uh, tutorial thank you so much for watching if you like this tutorial please give a thumbs up and if you want to see this kind of videos um, subscribe to my, subscribe to my channel thank you